the Arms Bazaar, Washington, D.C., September 1978. We have come here today as brothers to all of the people of this earth. We feel identified with the poor and the evil things all of us are capable of doing. As men, we have been taught to dominate each other and the rest of the world. We have made a shambles of things. We stand on the brink of nuclear disaster. Something must be done or we are doomed to perish at our own hands. Most of the world is already choked by our need to dominate and to oppress. With the weapons on display here at the Arms Bazaar and for sale here, we are again reaffirming our commitment to continue our senseless game of violence. We toy with weapons to kill and maim people. We act as if the world is a place to be ruled, the people are pawns we must control. We come from the same mentality as you. We also oppress and try to dominate. We are not trying to self-righteously condemn you as warmongers. All of us men have a responsibility to remove our oppression from the world. We are here today to invite others to share with us in a needed dialogue. We need to talk about the pain our lives cause others. We need to create hope for the oppressed by removing from the world our need for violence and domination. The world does not need more weapons or more force. It does not need more of our technology or expertise. If the children of the world are to have a future, we must begin now to relinquish our death grip on things. Let us remove our weapons from the planet, those weapons which are displayed here today and those weapons which we daily wield in our own personal lives. Rick and I were arrested, and after a two-week jury trial, we were found not guilty. August 1977, <clears throat> Rick and I, two brothers, trapped in a cage in Arlington County Jail. The Cancer War by Albert Camus. In this our age of infamy, man's choice is but to be a tyrant, traitor, prisoner. No other choice has he. Just as Dan Bergen has said many times, Given the violence of the times, it is a good thing for religious to be behind bars. It seems so right that Rick and I and the others should be wearing prison gray and blue. Serving time, <clears throat> even 10 days, I begin to see how the total institution works. First the classification, a number, not a name, then giving up all possessions, then finally the cage and the cage keepers, the guards. Our group started off with one strike against it. We are federal prisoners in the county jail. Also, we are not liked very much by the administration of the prison. So the ordeal begins. Held up in a cell about five by eight, accommodation, commode, and sink, the things we take for granted become special gifts that the man gives out like Christmas presents. Toothbrush, toothpaste, no washcloth. It took me four days before I had a towel. From the receiving cell, it is difficult to know day from night. The days went by counting the meals and watching the people come and go through the little window in the door. The administration plays games with us, calling off visits because we refuse to stand up for inspection, an event which never took place. The sheriff never came. I worry about John Shield, Scott, and Juan Avila because they are fasting besides the regular ordeals. So far, I am the only one who has been moved from receiving into a regular cell block, D3. The cell block consists of seven men in a section that has small rooms in a common room with a TV, one sink, one shower, and commode. It is certainly different than receiving. This is movement from cell block to dining room for meals, but you have to be out of your room from nine to five. The men here are in for short terms for forgery, rape, sodomy, and assault. The greatest time so far is when the five of us get together for mass and discussion groups. It is great to see Rick, Juan, and the others. We are also seem to create instant unity in community, probably because of our commitment to resistance. 
There is unity and strength in the fact that we have resisted into jail, and it probably won't be the last time. Also, it speaks to the inmates, too, even though they do not understand fully what and why of our action. I used to wonder when I was in the cemetery when and in what manner the cross would have to be taken up. I think I am beginning to realize that the Arlington County Detention Center is the beginning of a personal Good Friday. This concept is both exciting and scary. I think that real freedom is giving up what society calls freedom and going beyond the chains, handcuffs, and cages and being free in the spirit. Jail is not something that should be yearned for, but it seems that most of the important people in the scriptures, from the prophets to the saints, all to Christ, some of their life was spent behind bars. The road to salvation seems to have a few stops at the local penal institution. I am also glad that Rick and I are in together. Even though we are not together physically, we were never closer in spirit. Brothers in crisis and risk, it has a great ring about it. I think what is special about our situation is that it seems to be a direct result, almost the next step toward our growth toward the promised land. Today was also my first class in law. We discussed some of the cases of the guys. Some I think really got screwed. Sometimes we really get screwed by the system. The justice system reminds me of rolling dice. Nothing ever results in the same roll. Sentence depends on many factors, power, friends, good lawyer, and finally a benevolent judge whose decision depends on what kind of day he is having. One dilemma we faced is the manner in which religion in jail kind of reinforces the ideas of a larger society. I realize that religion can be a comfort to the inmates, but it almost has an opium effect which says, hang in there, it will get better. Repent and believe. It has a definite Jesus and me approach without speaking of any kind of institutional injustice or social sin. This idea is a rather new one, but these men might just be victims rather than sinners. Also dangerous is the idea of jail being of the will of God. This concept could mean that somehow Arlington County Detention Center could be an institution of the will of the Lord. Part of the problem is that these people who volunteer to come in and run the Bible classes are good people. Laymen who try, but there is still a slight idea of us and them. They can sympathize and understand, but they still walk out when the time comes, and this could make all the difference. The Catholic chaplain seems more in jail than I am. He is ultra-conservative and definitely pro-administration, which makes him almost useless. Again, he is a nice guy, but I don't think he is so is that effective. He might as well wear a guard's uniform. Yesterday we played some basketball, released a lot of tension. It was good for Rick, too. Sports is the same in or out, the same old macho. Sometimes I feel guilty that I am not fasting like Scott and John and Juan, but right now I could not handle it. The mental thing is new and sometimes difficult. If I was doing the physical thing too, I just don't know. The hardest thing to handle so far is the boredom. They close the doors at nine and don't open them until five. I don't see the reason for this except crowd control and discipline. If I was in here for more time, I would have to totally adopt as it is, I can be, I can be in, but just playing a game, biding time. The men don't like the rules and regulations at all, but because they have no power, they complain in secret. Any sign of individualism is frowned upon. Everyone at all times must look and do the same things. The theme has to be, to get along, you have to go along. The punishment is called writing up, and with it comes loss of privileges. Adolescent behavior of reward and punishment. What really bothers me is how the guards can do their jobs. It doesn't seem to bother them at all, putting people in cages and herding them around like sheep. I think that is why they do not want us five together. Any signs of unity scares them a little. Friendship means little. I can imagine if Rick and I were together, we would probably end up in solitary confinement. It just seems ironic that the last time I kept any sort of a journal was in the Vichyot. Joe Nangle came to visit, but the man was playing mind games again and wouldn't let me see him. But they got to see Rick, though. It feels good to have support from the friars. I hope the support comes from Fairlawn also. Tomorrow is the court. 
Ten days is enough for now. This place is the only place I know of that gives you nothing to do all day long, not even work. The following day we went back before the judge and we were given sentence served and we were released. The time was the fall of 1979, and Rick and I had been acting at General Electric both in the city of Philadelphia and on the King of Prussia. And we had a couple of demonstrations at building number nine, and in the fall of 80, of uh, 79, we were involved in the demonstration. At the last minute, Rick couldn't make it because one of the family members was sick. It was the first and last time that we ever acted separate, and as a result, we had to go to court and we were sentenced to 45 days to a year. The Montgomery County Court is in Norristown and they call it the castle because it reminds one of a castle. It reminded me of the Bastille and we initially got sentenced to 45 days to a year. And I'd just like to read, I kept a bit of a diary while I was there. And it's called Reflections from Caesar's Castle in Norristown. As we were being led from the fiasco of Uncle Milty's court, Milton Moss was the name of the judge, we came upon this building that looks like it was built when chivalry and Arthur's court were in vogue. No, it wasn't a mirage. It was the Montgomery County Prison in beautiful downtown Norristown. The dehumanization process is the same as usual. Strip search, fingerprinting, mugshot, giving up any kind of individuality, such as clothes, transformed into a prisoner. Light blue shirt, dark blue pants, assigned as one of three men in C-20. The place inside resembles a ship with three decks. Our voyage this time on the No Love Boat will take 45 days to a year. Judge Milton Moss already told us that there was no hope of rehabilitating us, so this voyage is pure punishment. Blinding lights, incredible noise, steel doors clanging constantly, remind one that we are on the wrong side of a cage, or are we? The guards are for the most part cordial. Some of them sound like inmates. Most of them see their job as part-time on the way to another career. It is difficult to adjust to the routine, especially the noise blasting into the wee hours of the morning. Bill, Mike, and Bob seem to be doing okay. We have with us five members of the Keystone Alliance, an anti-nuclear group who are protesting in the nuclear, nuclear power plant in Limerick, Pennsylvania. They refused to pay a fine and were sentenced to four days as a guest of the county. The food here is passable. The hardest thing to get adjusted to is the boredom and the routine. The things most people take for granted, the ability to go out for a coke or go to the movies, are denied here and it takes getting used to. The atmosphere is highly intense, similar to a live wire, any time things could flare up. Despite the scene here, the worst is the courtroom. I know where God went to when he died and became a judge, and the church became the courtroom. Everyone whispers and waits for the supreme being, the judge. The judge dispenses justice as if he were detached from any guilt himself. Any suggestion of opposition to his divine word, his manhood is threatened, and his wrath comes down upon your head. Uncle Milty got angry with us, and I think he lost his cool, hence the harsh sentence. I think what I reacted to the most is his statement that the courtroom is no place for morality as if the concept of immoral laws never occurred to him. Deja vu, the judges in Nazi Germany. I told him that his laws protecting private property have to be scrutinized and selectively observed. Some property has no right to exist. Concentration camps, the Pentagon, General Electric, Trident submarines, and so on. Therefore, any laws protecting these properties have to be judged immoral. And any court which prosecutes people for breaking these laws is an immoral forum. We then reacted as if the court had nothing to say to us. 
The judge, of course, with his power, his manhood, and trouble, proceeded to give us a sermon on law and order. He accused us of being a threat to a society of law and order, and, th th and he wanted to make us send a message to the community through us <clears throat> that General Electric can count on him to protect their interests, hence the heavy sentence. He actually believed that he was protecting society from a threat. He probably felt like a hero, going home with a medal, his manhood intact. So far, the scene is all right. What helps a lot is the support of the folks on the outside. I just wish some of those other guys had half as much support. Most are entirely on their own to fight against the system. No family, no friends, inferior legal help, and of course, no money. Friday, February the 1st. We talked to a lawyer friend of Bob Smith, and there's a possibility of a reduction in sentence, but so far nothing. When someone said that prison is the second home of the poor, they weren't wrong. Prison seems to include whatever minority group that is on the bottom of society's rung. I can't believe that a lot of these guys don't have any family or friends that can raise enough money to bail them out. Then there are the people who feel that a couple of days in jail will do some people good. These people have never been in a jail. Jails, like the castle, exist for one thing only, keeping people unseen and unheard, keeping people hidden away so society feels protected. The prison system is a direct result of people's fears. It seems so simple a solution. Instead of looking into the social evils that breed crime and try to come up with a solution, they just say put, someone, put prisoners away for a period of time and pay people to take care of them. The men in here are also nuclear victims, poor in an ancient institution, the result of no funds. It all comes down to nuclear economics, millions for defense, pennies to solve social problems. The Pentagon breeds places like Norristown, from Caesar's Palace on the Potomac to Caesar's Castle on Mount Airy Street. So close, so very close. It is amazing that the concept of a prison, as first envisioned by the Quakers, was almost like a religious retreat. Give a man, a woman, who commits a crime, a Bible, and lock them up for a while. When sufficiently sorry for one's sins, they were released. This idea was humane, but it carried with it an idea that a criminal was automatically a sinner, and this prison was God's way of bringing the criminal back to him. But that idea, I think, is wrong. These people here are more sinned against than sinners. Some, most of the fault, lies elsewhere. Prison is a microcosm of the world. Life lived out in the shadow of the bomb. It resembles the second beast of Revelations. In here we have the haves, the warden, the assistant warden, the guards, and the have-nots, the inmates, not prisoners. The prisoners, inmates, have-nots, powerless, spend most of their time preying on each other, stealing, fighting, constant tension. The rest of the time their senses are dulled by constant loud noise of blaring radios and TVs. The guards just watch, occasionally stopping a fight, or just putting in their time, hoping that nothing happens to disrupt the orderly flow of things. It is like the nurse on duty observing a dying patient and just hoping the patient dies after a shift is over. The overriding theme of the castle, like society, is one of power, obedience, and control. Obey and everything is okay, Disobey, and it's the whole. The guards seem to be trained in one thing, crowd control. The bomb cast a shadow over the place. All inmates are in part victims. No money for rehabilitation, but millions for defense. The prison system itself is part of this, of this nation's defense. The good people are being defended from the bad, the misfits. The rich are being protected from the outrage of the poor. 
The Pentagon and the Norristown Jail are all part of the network of defense. The Secretary of Defense, Harold Brown, is sort of the supreme warden. The director of prisons should have its office in the Pentagon. We are now in the hands of Judge Moss. He has had that appeal in his hands for a week. I can't believe that the man would play with our freedom this way. Waiting is bad. If only we knew either way we could adjust. Hopefully we will know by Monday. Each day seems to be getting better, if a word like better can be used in a place like this. Heard from many folks from all over, sending their support. It is good to hear, but I am not sure how strong their support is. Something tells me that I will still go it alone, but it is good to hear from everyone in the castle. Saturday, February the 16th. I was just reading Gordon Zahn's In Solitary Witness. Franz Jangerstatter, who was opposing Hitler's war machine, uses an analogy about the early Christians and how they could have worshipped idols like the government demanded and continued as Christians in secret, hence saving their lives. The church today, like in 1930s Germany, seemed to have made a choice about life and death. The church remains inactive, worse than silent, on the nuclear arms issue, as if it is afraid that it will lose the respect of the government. The church in the United States seems to be saying we are not the stuff that martyrs are made of. Little do they realize that silence is consent, and inactivity means worshipping at the altar of Caesar and bowing to the god of war, Mars. Does the church fear for its status, property, prestige, what? Will someone someday write a book, if anyone survives, about resistance in the 1980s, and also entitle it In Solitary Witness? Saturday, February the 23rd, 1980. In two days, our voyage in the castle will be over. Looking back, the last two weeks were the easiest. Now it is just waiting to be released. The hardest thing to understand is the nature of our support. Many, letter, many letters from all over the United States poured in, voicing support. I even had a letter from Poline Province, and I, my assignment was changed. For 45 days to a year, my assignment was in Norristown County Jail. But what kind of support? It is as if some put me on a pedestal, more to be admired than imitated. I have the feeling that with all this support, I will still be almost alone except for Rick the next time I act. People write in and seem to think that I have some special talents that enable me to handle 35 days in the castle. People say, well, he has been preparing himself for this. He is willing to take the consequences of his act. Lord, spare me the consequences of my action. General Electric should be made to realize its consequences. It would have been just as happy if Uncle Milty would have let us go. I just hope that I, we, have not been used by our supporters to satisfy their consciences that somehow they acted with us and they feel good about their social awareness. I do not have the capacity to suffer for anyone. I am not even sure I can handle my own suffering. I act because I read the Old and the New Testaments. Why do other people who read the same books remain inactive? Maybe someday I will understand. We were finally released, and I'd just like to share with you a few letters that we received. Immediately after we got out of jail, we returned to General Electric headquarters in building number nine. 
We create monsters and insist they are tame, and when they bite the hand of the feeder and the breeder, will we be surprised? And will the bite be so big that there won't be a thing left to be surprised? We fill the world with tragic sadness, call it defense, blame the Russians, and go to the bank. We are not so mad as to think that we shall create a world in which murder will not occur. We are fighting for a world in which murder will no longer be legal. Penance is part of the revolutionary